Well, this has not been a good day and, frankly, a good couple of days for the Pac-12 Conference. I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports. We cover the Big 12 Conference, you know, a conference that actually is thriving, is alive, is well, is not on the verge of being six feet under. That's what we do here at Heartland College Sports, and we are so happy to be with you. Uh, Yes, we're going to talk about the Sweet 16 on another show this week. So uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll catch all our Sweet 16 March Madness talk as well. But this show is about the Pac-12, and of course there are ramifications for the Big 12 and all this. So first things first, there was supposed to be, and I don't mean to smirk when I say this, but I find it just so rich for so many reasons. There was supposed to be a meeting on Tuesday, Pac-12 board meeting, CEOs, commissioner, they were supposed to get together. And that didn't happen. That did not happen. John Wilner, the guy, you know, the Pac-12 fanboy who has been wrong at every turn, wrote 10, 11 days ago that uh, the Pac-12 was going to have this big meeting on Tuesday, March 21st. And everybody was going to get together with George Klievkov, the new commissioner. And not new, but the commissioner. They were going to get together and they were going to discuss options about their TV deal and the presidents were going to be on the same page, and everybody was going to have the specifics of the media deal. They could even be finalizing expansion by the next board meeting. There's going to be no surprises. Everyone is ready to move forward. That is what John Wilner wrote, mercurynews.com, going back to March 10th. And he was saying as much in other you know media hits he was doing last week as well. I, like This guy was all over media talking about a lot of these kinds of issues. And he has been proven wrong again. I'm reading this now from 750 The Game. This is from March 16th. John Calzano does an interview last Wednesday on 750 The Game radio station. And he said, I think the meeting coming up on Tuesday is really important. I think there's motivation from the presidents and chancellors to wrap this up. He said he expects... Amazon and Apple to be part of a new media deal in addition to ESPN. He said, I think what's going to happen is the Pac-12 is going to go with ESPN for Tier 1 rights, and then Apple and Amazon will come in with a streaming service for the Tier 2 rights, the Pac-12 network games. And he thinks it's going to be blended together. He said that last Wednesday. And then he said as well in this radio interview, quote, I think we might get the expansion news before we get the media rights news. Here we are on Tuesday The big day. This was going to be Christmas morning for the Pac-12. Here we are on Christmas morning for the Pac-12, supposedly. And not only does none of that come to fruition, there's no board meeting. These guys don't even get, there is no Pac-12 meeting today. Don't take my word for it. John Wilner put this on Twitter. (laughs) Uh, 7.32 Central time on Tuesday night. Somebody tweets at him, just a random fan. Hey, John. John's like, oh boy. Hey, John, do you know if the Pac-12 CEOs and commissioner actually met today? And if they did, do you know what time they started? <laughs> and John responds and he goes, there was no board meeting today. Where's my cricket sound bite? Doot, 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 doot. Whoopsie daisy. My goodness. What a disaster this is on so many levels. Now, this is good for the Big 12. If you want to see the Big 12 expand with some of these teams, every day there is no deal. That is good for the Big 12 Conference. And since we're in the business of covering and following the Big 12 Conference, uh, that's good for many of you watching this. And by the way, I think this is good for if you're a fan of a Pac-12 team that could end up joining the Big 12. I think this is good for you. There's been so much noise the last few days. The last really week, it was lost amongst the March Madness shuffle. But the last week, you had a lot of people saying a lot of things. You had a lot of presidents around the Pac-12 talking to a lot of media. What's his name in Arizona? I, I mean, I would love to see Arizona in the Big 12, but I'll tell you right now, this guy, Robert Robbins, don't know him from a hole in the wall. I don't like to prejudge anybody. But this guy did every media interview he could do last week, and he like contradicted himself at every turn. 
like, dude, it's fine to talk to every media outlet, but at least have your story straight, man. I mean, at least, whatever you're saying, at least be consistent. Nobody was chattier than Robert Robbins last week. He said he likes the Pac-12. He likes the Big 12. He thinks a Pac-12 deal gets done. He can't comment until a deal gets done. He has friends in the Big 12, but he's definitely not going to the Big 12. But, you know, he likes the Big 12. That was the week for Robert Robbins. It's like, dude, can we get a media 101 course here for you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So you had a lot of chattering, and then you had this as well. What you had happen here is uh, the Utah president speak this week. So he did a little media tour, not a media tour, but uh, you know he talked to a radio station, uh, the Bill Riley Show, he talked to. I believe it's out of Salt Lake. And he was asked about the Pac-12 and this media deal. Now remember, this was on Monday of this week. So this was the day before the big meeting that John Wilner promised That was going to clear up a lot of the drama in the Pac-12. Everybody was going to be on the same page, and it was going to be very, very smooth, and the future was going to be bright. Now, remember, there was no board meeting on Tuesday, and this is on Monday when University of Utah President Taylor Randall said on Salt Lake City Radio that media talks, quote, still got a ways to go. However, he did say there is solidarity amongst Pac-12 members. Now, Utah is also a school that has thumbed its nose at the idea of joining the Big 12. But when their president goes on radio the day before this big board meeting takes place, and then the board meeting never happens, and he says that there's still a ways to go with the TV deal, that completely contradicts what a guy like John Wilner has been reporting now for the better part of nearly two weeks, that... Man, this thing was done. Everything was good. Everybody was on the same page. It just had to, you know, dot a few I's, cross a few T's. It was going to be fine. Until it wasn't. And that's what this week has been about. Last week was kind of a lifeline for the Pac-12. Now, a lot of us were not fully engaged because of March Madness. But there was more unity sort of, around the league than what you have seen in almost a year. Well, that has completely collapsed in about 36 hours this week. Completely collapsed. You have had a situation now where the Utah president says, we got a ways to go on any TV deal. By the way, that was preceded by another report from the New York Post, Andrew Marchand, who said basically the the long and short of his story at the New York Post was that the Pac-12 is not going to be able to move until they figure out what exactly Apple wants to do regarding the Pac-12 and Apple TV. And nobody tells Apple when to move. Apple moves on its own timeline. And that was the long and short of the story. Apple is basically trying to figure out, do they want the Pac-12? How much do they want? What do they think it's going to look like? How's this going to play out? Well, and the Pac-12 needs Apple because they're kind of running out of places to go to, right? The Pac-12 is trying to get Big 12 money out of the gates, about 30 mil a year. That's at the base level. And they need some kind of combination, potentially, whether it's just Apple to reach that number or Apple and ESPN throw Amazon in the mix if they want a little bit of sports as well on a Friday night, let's say, with Thursday night football. They need some combination of that. And if Apple's not willing to really have that conversation right now, then the Pac-12 is in no man's land. The Pac-12 is in a place where they literally don't know what to do. They don't have any plan on what to do right now. And they can't move because one of the big players doesn't really want to move and has no urgency to move. And why would Apple want to move sooner than they have to? I mean, the macroeconomic trends are bad right now. Unless you're living under a rock, you know that this year, some may argue we're already in a recession, but certainly it's not going to be a year of strong economic growth. Turn on CNBC for five minutes, you'll figure that out, right? So is this a point where Apple or anybody else says, you know, I'd like some football, but do I need some football? Especially, do I need Pac-12 football? The Pac-12, as it currently stands, is not appointment viewing. It is the Mountain West on steroids, sort of. And, you know, it's not the best steroids. It's like the steroids that you get 
in the back of the gym from some grungy guy who's been taking them for 25 years who looks like he's about to collapse or his heart's about to explode. It's those steroids. It's not cream of the crop anabolic steroids here we're talking about. It's, it's Mountain West on steroids, but uh, not the best. <laughs> That's what the Pac-12 brand is right now. Like, what is the must-watch, can't-miss Pac-12 game that's going to have millions and millions of eyeballs glued to it once USC and UCLA leave? Find it for me. Find me the enthusiasm amongst the fan bases that is just going to be can't-miss college football. Yeah, once again, where's my cricket sounder? Where is that? Oh, I got to find one. You know the answer, and I know the answer. It does not exist. What do they call it? The, uh, what do they call the Washington-Washington State game? The Apple Bowl or something like that? Come on, please. No one's getting juiced up for that. We all know that. We all understand that. So this has been uh, Donald Wright Stanford Cal. Yeah, okay, maybe Stanford Cal. And, you know, the seven alumni in uh, the Valley will have their TVs turned on. And half the people on campus won't even know there's a football game going on because they're studying for midterms. So I know you're trying to throw something out there, Donald, but, uh, you know, that's not the one. (laughs) I'm telling you, it is bad, bad, bad looks right now for that conference and that league. And there is no end in sight. There's nothing that makes you sit there and say, okay, but this. Like, what is, as of today, as of this conversation, what is the angle to sit there and say, you know what? The Pac-12, okay, fine, it was a bad part of the week, early part of the week, but this. There is no but right now. There's no but. The but does not exist. Let me look at what's happening here and what you guys got for us on Facebook Live, some of the comments. John writes, Pac-12 has been in denial and the bravado and hubris of the school presidents and commissioners, hold on, trying to keep up with the comments here, are ridiculous. They're going to find a golden bridge of retreat, Big 12 for at least the four corners. I'd like San Diego State to come too. Uh, Yeah, you know, I'm not as hot on San Diego State. Four corners sign me up, although I'm getting close to the point of telling Colorado to go pound sand. I don't know about you guys, but the more, excuse me, not Colorado, Utah. You guys know I'm a big Colorado guy. Not Colorado. I misspoke there. Uh, Utah. I'm getting close to wanting to tell Utah to pound sand. We're giving them a lifeline, right? You guys were Mountain West a few years back. We want to make that Holy War a conference game. That's good for everybody. And Utah has continued to thumb its nose at the Big 12 in a weird way. I mean, what what was it? The AD a couple of weeks ago, the Utah AD put out some statement on Twitter, you know, on Big 12 expansion rumors. He put out a tweet saying, give me a break. Okay, fine. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay, give me a break. Okay, enjoy uh, hanging around with Washington State, Oregon State, Cal, and Stanford. And guess what? You ain't got the uh, academics to justify what Cal and Stanford might end up doing, whether it's independent or something else. So you better hope somebody comes out and offers you a lifetime if you're Utah if this thing does implode. But I'm, I'm getting close to wanting to tell Utah to go pound some sand. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm just getting more and more frustrated with how they are going about their business and the fact that they are being so smug about this whole thing. It is such a turnoff, and there's no need for it. Just roll with it. I don't know why Utah would be offended by this. You guys could be on the verge of not having a conference. If one domino falls, this whole thing's over. And how long are you going to wait? You think this economy's, the, the macroeconomic trends are going to improve over the next five weeks, six weeks? They're not. They will not get better. There's nothing to suggest they're going to get better. Anybody who knows that understands things are not improving in the short term. They may bounce back next year, but they're not improving in the short term. And you guys have absolutely zero, absolutely uh, zero leg to stand on on this whole thing. So we'll be following, we'll be watching closely, and we appreciate you joining us here on the show. Hey, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for being here on the podcast. You know what to do. Rate, review, subscribe. We'll get you a Heartland College Sports koozie in the mail. Let me show you one here on uh, YouTube and Facebook. You get one of these. All you have to do 
is send me a screenshot of that rating and review to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com. I'll get you hooked up. Why do I do that? Because um, that's how we beat ESPN, CBS, all the big shots when it comes to Big 12 podcasts. Because you leave a rating, a five-star rating, you leave a review, you subscribe. The algorithm with iTunes, that helps us. That helps us with Spotify. So that's why, you know, we, we put an importance on that because, you know, we started this thing grassroots with you. With you spreading the word. Not through some massive media organization. It was you, it was me, and, you know, we built this thing up to now millions of followers on a monthly basis when it comes to the website, uh, the video, the podcast, everything else. So... Thank you for doing that and just taking five minutes. Not, it won't take you five minutes. It'll take you 90 seconds to do this when the show's over. Uh, let me get to some of your other stuff. Uh, Nancy, shame on you, Pete, for not giving K-State a chance against Kentucky. I got a lot of crap from K-State fans, and I hope you guys know that you're always welcome to dunk on me. When I'm wrong, listen, I, I've always done this show whether it's predictions or anything about this show, giving you a clear, concise opinion on what I think is going to happen. And sometimes I'm not going to be in favor of your team. Sometimes I'm going to say, hey, the Big 12 screwed this up, the Big 12 screwed that up. Uh, But, you know, I built this thing on just telling you what I think and being honest. And in this case, I'm glad I was wrong. I didn't think that K-State would know how to slow down Oscar Toshibwe. Now, with that being said, I'm going to defend myself here for a minute and say, let's be honest. K-State, now Marquise Noel had a great game. Uh, He was unbelievable. But K-State hit a couple of huge, huge three-pointers that if those things don't go down, and they were tough shots as well, uh, you know, the game might turn out differently. K-State deserved the win. I cannot wait to root on K-State this week against Tom Izzo and Michigan State. I'm going to be so fired up for you guys, and I'm going to be obviously waving the purple pom-poms. I live around K-Staters. You know, I live in Kansas City, so you guys know, in case you didn't know that. You know, my neighbor next door, guy's got his K-State flag out for every game. Like, I I love seeing K-State succeed. I just didn't think they'd be able to get by Toshiba in Kentucky. That's it. That's it. But you know what? Like, K-State's done all season. They shut the doubters up, including me. And uh, I can't wait to see him play Michigan State. And it is going to be an absolutely outstanding, outstanding game. I'm so fired up for that. And I know many of you are as well. So, But I, I will absolutely say, yeah, I got that game wrong. I didn't have a good weekend in the second round games. I had a good first round prediction. Uh, didn't do well in the second round. I thought Candace would win. That was a bad loss for KU, the way they blew it down the stretch with the lead that they had. Uh, Baylor, I don't want to say they got run out of the building, but it was ugly against Creighton. And then TCU had a lead against Gonzaga and, you know, slipped away. But covered the spread. I don't know if you saw the ending of that game, but, hey, covered the four and a half. Woo, boy, that was big for a lot of you. I know that much. So, I, I, but it has been a solid tournament overall. Am I disappointed there's only two Big 12 teams in the Sweet 16? Yes, I am. I wish there would have been three. I was getting greedy thinking four. But I think the one thing we take out of this is the gap between the top and the bottom of college basketball is maybe as small as it's ever been. Transfer portal, NIL, everything else that goes into it, um, the gap continues to shrink in college basketball. It's great for the tournament, it's maybe not great for the Blue Bloods, but it's great for a thrilling first two, uh, first two rounds of March Madness, I'll tell you that right now. I mean, look at Fairley Dickinson. Holy cow. Unbelievable story there. And they almost got to the Sweet 16, for heaven's sake. Holy smokes. So uh, that's where we stand right now. We will have a full preview, by the way, of the uh, Sweet 16 games. I'll give you my picks coming up on Wednesday night on the show, and uh, we'll see what happens. Also on, let's see what we got here. Uh, some of the other comments I want to get to. Will K-State be Michigan State, Mark? Uh, Mark, you're going to have to wait till Wednesday night for that one, my man. You have to wait for that one. Pete, how great would a K-State-Houston championship game be? That could happen, right, because they're on different sides of the bracket. A current Big 12 member against a former Big 12 member, or a current against a future. That'd be pretty cool. You know, you could also get 
Texas Kansas State an All Big Twelve matchup for this season. That'd be pretty exciting as well. That's that's what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for K State Texas or K State Houston. Hey, that, give me that, and I'm a happy guy. There's Big Twelve ties all over the place. Uh, there we go. That's that's what I want to see happen. Pete, I find it interesting. Oregon and Washington have been very quiet. That's from Jared. Excellent point, Jared. They're the ones that run the show. They have been very, very quiet as well. Uh, Pete, surprised the Big Ten has not sent an invite to Fairleigh Dickinson. <laughs> That's well done. That's yeah. The big the Big Ten thought it was going to lock up the New York City market with Rutgers. As somebody that worked in New York City for five years, you know, for those of you that don't know my story, I was in radio in Oklahoma. I then was in New York City doing stuff at Fox News and CBS and Sports Illustrated for five years, and that's where I started this website. Um, you know New York. You know that anyone who thought that the Big Ten was going to become, you know, uh, really tied to New York City because of Rutgers has no idea what New York City is all about. And that's what the Big Ten thought all those years ago, and what's it done for them? Absolutely nothing. Heck, FDU might do more for them than, than, than Rutgers, for goodness sakes. Wow. <laughs> Uh, You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe on YouTube. Appreciate all that you guys do to help us grow this brand, grow this show. Get those koozies by leaving a rating and a review on the podcast and send me a screenshot to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com. We'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.